What's up, War Report family? It's your boy C Dub. Besides the QB position, which returning Auburn players need to show out this spring? Also, with the SEC tournament just around the corner, what are our expectations for Auburn men's basketball? And how do they look going into the big dance? We'll discuss all that and more in tonight's edition of the Midweek Report. <laughs> Wednesday, everyone, and welcome to the Midweek Rapport, sponsored by show sponsor, The Rage Room. Mm. An amazing sponsor and company, two locations, Opelika, Birmingham. You see the address there. Please go by and show your support by going there and breaking stuff, all right? Especially if, if your team uh, is on a two-game losing streak. You lost last night in Florida. <laughs> And you just want to break some stuff because you normally are very destructive when you lose. <laughs> Head over to the Birmingham Rage Room or the Opelika Range Room and just, just, just do what you do. All right, do what you do. Also, show them some love if you're an Auburn fan as well. Uh, thanks to them for showing up being a sponsor of today's show. Also, guys, you can help us out by sharing this video, smashing that like button, and subscribing if you're new to the channel. You can also join and get access to some great perks. Ike, how can they do that, and what perks should they expect? It's really easy. There's a join button. You click it, and then you decide how much money you'd like to spend per month. It's a nominal fee, right? Like, we're not asking for a whole lot. We're not asking for much. Just a couple of... Uh, dollars i was gonna say forever but then you know it's like i don't really want to go there anyway um yeah you could join and become a member and get a, a access to all the green name gang stuff particularly we do you know i've i've started this new thing and i think the members like it i'm doing what i call office hours where it's just i get on live and i let y'all ask me questions about whatever it's usually sports related so you know it stays kosher um doing that once a week right now and uh actually did a call-in show for this uh this past week so um, I'm going to see if we can continue to do that where people can call in live and talk. That was fun for everybody. So, yeah, you got to be a member to get on get with that. I ain't just opening it up for anybody. I'm not Paul Feinbaum. I'm not going to just talk to whoever want to come and talk. No. Paul. Yeah, no, it's not happening. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, you can gift a membership to somebody if they're hesitant to do that uh, membership on their own. You can gift it to them. If you like listening to audio versions of stuff, getting clicked in with the Network Auburn Express of Temple Podcast College Loop and Justice State Pods are all here for you, gentlemen. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's get into today's show, guys. Obviously, when you start talking about players who need to have an impressive spring uh, practice and performance, quarterback comes to mind. That's the low hanging fruit here. Let's 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 actually be creative and discuss other players on this team returning players who we think need to have an impressive uh spring uh ike you have some graphics do we want to look at each position i guess each facet of the team special teams and, and whatnot do we want to do all that or just look at defense and offense i want to do it uh, it's up to you you know what i'm saying we, we good go either way let's 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 just stick to let's just stick to the 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 main two sides of the ball here let's start with start with defense Right. Just in case to refresh your memory, guys, of our roster, this is our roster here. Uh, I'm not going to list every player, but I have a list of guys from this side of the ball. This roster here not only consists of returning players, but new players, all right, whether it's transfer guys or guys out of high school. But the first name that I want to mention uh, from this uh, list here, gentlemen, is actually I'm going to list four guys from this side of the ball. 
four. The first one is Robert Woodyard, linebacker. Hmm. The second one is Zeke Walker, defensive line. Caleb Wooden, safety. And J.D. Rhyme, cornerback. Mm. These are the four that that I'm I'm looking I'm looking at these guys pretty pretty tough to see how you look how they're going to look in this spring. It's now a never in for some of these guys, in my personal opinion. But I want to hear from you guys. Let's start with Robert Woodyard. Ike, your thoughts about him? As he was a guy who came in with some pretty big fanfare. He was someone who. Uh, Auburn was able to to commit and steal from Bama, and people were excited about this guy. He hasn't quite yet had a chance to get in and, and see the field, but I want to hear from you with some of the talented recruiting, uh, some of the talented linebackers we have coming in uh, from this previous recruiting class. Is it time for Robert Williard to really show what he can do? Let's say yikes. Uh, yeah, the answer is yes. Um, I don't think he has another season to to figure it out um, because they they are recruiting and they're going to listen. This isn't new. It's not as if nobody else recruits and they're going to replace uh, highly touted players out of high school with more highly touted players out of high school. I just think that this coaching staff has shown that uh, they're not going to take a year off. Right. Like there's not going to be this situation where it may have been in some other ones where you'll have a good year at one particular position group and then they'll refocus somewhere else. This next no, every cycle, they're trying to fill it with another four or five star at every group. Like the only group that that has been immune to this so far has been the running back room. Right. They didn't go get a running back this past mm. season, but every other room they try they went and got though. somebody. Yeah. Yeah because they're going to lose a bunch of guys this year. So they but they every year you can expect they're going to go get somebody. Robert Woodyard I don't think has another spring to sit at the bottom of the linebacker depth chart and still have a prayer of seeing the field absent of injury. So he needs to make it count this spring. I agree with that 100%. Mike G thoughts on that one. Yeah, look, man. Um linebacker play, I think we all would agree improved last year. Um, so to Ike's point, the expectations are raising at that position. And it, it's get with the program or get left behind here for for him, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and here's why I say that. Guys, the block is hot for Auburn football. It's hot. It went six and seven last year. Now, not because of the defense. In my opinion, it was not because of the defense. But. Um, the blame game is going to be widespread in year two if this thing, if they take a step back, right? And I would argue that this team probably needs this defense to step up more this coming season than they did even last season. Because I'm not sure how much better they got offensively, if at all. So I know Freeze is going to call plays, but without Auburn's defense last year would have been a disaster an absolute and complete and utter failure. So Robert Woodyard, sir, I'm calling you to the table. Show what you got and, and, and step up in this thing. I, I think that it, what fans are going to be looking for is like clear development from year to year. You know, he was a pretty highly touted guy coming in. Some of these guys have to yeah. develop into draft picks. You know, I thought he was a guy who was a potential draft pick when he came in. Yeah. So to your point, that he doesn't have another season, it's it's step up or get left behind because they're raising the level of recruiting. And, um, you know, linebacker is one of those things where if, if you get your weight up coming in, you maybe could make some splash your freshman year. I don't think that's a position where they would be afraid to play a young guy as long as he's physically developed. True. But you maybe don't have to be as physically developed as you would on D-line. <laughs> so... I don't know, just my thoughts on it. But, yeah, I, I agree with Ike on everything he said about Woodyard stepping up this year. Right? I think he's got all the talent. You know, we'll see what it looks like in DJ Durkin's system. That's another thing, too. You got a new you got a new defensive coordinator slash linebackers coach. Like, yeah, yeah. now's a good time to make a good first impression on him. For sure. Yeah, he's going to be looking for um, – he's going to be looking for effort in his first spring practice. Which guys go out there and play like their hair is on fire? 
Uh, and, and Robert Woodyard's that guy. I think he, I think he's a guy who has a chance to stand out. So I like Woodyard is a guy to make a splash this spring. I, I, I struggled with, I didn't name this guy, but, uh, he's on the list. He's on the roster. I believe I saw him. He's what there. name are we talking about? <sighs> is Steiner on this list? Yeah, he is 32 right there. Yeah. Leslie Steiner? Steiner, Steiner on this list. Is it, is it, is it, uh, yes. I'll say okay. yes. Okay. <laughs> Wesley Steiner, bro. Like, okay. here's I'm the just, thing. Man, just only if Wesley Steiner cares about playing the, in the NFL. If he doesn't care about playing in the NFL, he wants to just continue to be on scholarship, finish his degree, mm. and then move on to whatever other post collegiate aspirations that he has that don't include playing professionally. Then, if, if that's not a thing for him, then this spring doesn't matter. He's not, not going to kick him off the team, right? He's going to finish his degree, and he's going to enjoy his time at Auburn and be fine, and he'll be there in case Auburn needs him to step up into a spot, you know, because somebody's not playing well, injury, blah, blah, blah. If that's what his goal is, then he's in a perfect spot because mm. you don't have to worry about trying to figure out what a new school is going to provide to you and all of But if he wants to play NFL ball, you don't have no more eligibility after this year. And there's no other opportunities for you to rewrite the tape that's already out there on you or the the narrative that's out there based upon the tape that's out there on you. Uh, so, yeah, he he, need, he needs this spring to be one where he shows all of the physical tools that he possesses, which he he's he can fly like he, he really can move around. He's 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 solid in, in his ability to like. He to deliver behind his pads, right? Like he can really hit when he gets you, but man, being where he needs to be and and not missing tackles in in certain spots, that's plagued him. Mm. And he's got to yeah. figure it out, or he's gonna be a guy who you know was a, a great locker room guy, which that's fine too, I guess. Again, I, 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 not everybody's ma- gonna make it to the NFL anyway, right? So if that's not a goal of his, then. Hey, man, be there in the spring, be a good teammate, help people understand what they need to do and keep people accountable and be ready when your number is called and move and, and, and ride off into the sunset as a, a great Auburn man, and which that's fine, too. Like, I don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with those aspirations. Uh, the next guy I have is Zeke Walker. Mm. And because of who we've lost along the defensive line, this guy played a good bit in the bowl game. And this is a guy who we've been waiting to see if he turns it on. Now's the time for him. Especially with Auburn looking for for dudes up front on the defensive line. Now's the time. Uh, Thoughts, Mike? Uh, I actually had a conversation after uh, or before. After the first spring practice with Jason Jones about Z Walker. Right. Okay. Yeah, he's. Apparently, he's been doing really well in off-season workouts and to start camp. So, uh, again, when you talk about guys making a big step, I think that a lot of these guys are starting to feel the pressure. There's a new defensive coordinator. Like I said, it's almost like a reset where, you know, hey, listen, you want to impress your new coaches because it's going to be a different scheme and guys want to be on the field no matter what scheme you're running. Zeke Walker has done some good work so far this spring now. it's just This is just a start. So, uh, I'm hoping that that effort continues, but also that it pushes other guys to step up. Um, so, yeah, I like Zeke Walker as a name to step up this spring. I, uh, you know, we take a lot of feedback, guys, from their teammates about guy. You, I mean, you guys remember uh, in in the offseason when TJA was here and, and we asked all three quarterbacks, you know, and give us a receiver to watch. And they all named Jay Fair. <laughs> So we're high on Jay Fair because his teammates seem to think that he was a guy that was just dependable and very underrated. Um, I wouldn't say that Zeke is getting Jay Fair hype, but, <laughs> you know, he's getting a little bit. It's not like my inbox isn't blowing up about him, but, you know, a couple guys have said, hey, man, keep an eye on this guy's spring. Mm. All right, let's get to the next one. Let's get mm. to the next one. Safety Caleb Wooden. Mm. Now, this secondary has seen several guys depart, right? It's time for Caleb Wooden, I would imagine. Thoughts on it? 
Oh, go ahead, Mike. No, go you, ahead, yeah, Mike. So you can go ahead, Mike. No, well, I was just going to say, like, you know, you mentioned the names that left that. You know, Jalen Simpson is at the combine doing backflips. Like, that whole secondary was a strength of this team. And, and I think there'll be a lot of pressure to continue that tradition going into this next season. So, you know, if you play DB, now is your time to shine. <laughs> DJ James, gone. Did he run like a 4-4-3 four, four, at the combine? Did I see that right? Uh, it was a 4-4 four, four something. I thought 4-4-3 four, four, sounds about right. 4-4-3, yeah. Four, four, three, yeah. I mean, they he was fat. We knew from his teammates that he was fast. You know, Simp was f- fast. Like, I mean, there's, there's opportunity all over the place. And, you know, I think at DB, I, even outside of Caleb, like, now is a great chance for a lot of guys to step in where where good legacies have been started. You know, think about it. The guys that they're filling in for were solid players who got invited to the combine. <laughs> yeah, time to step up, man, and, and keep this thing going. Like Kill, I, that name uh, definitely will be something as we watch. Now, now they're on spring break right now, guys. But um, when we get to watch practice next week, I'm going to have an eye on Caleb Wooden as well. I. Yeah, I mean, I think the the defensive secondary is is in an interesting place, mm-hmm. right? Um, because you've got Keontae Scott there, who they're trying out at the outside corner, but if you know if they need him to go pe- play the slot or an, a safety position of whatever, however the nickel, he whatever they play, turn. Say he played the nickel last year or something. Yeah, yeah. he did. So he did. so if he if he's gonna need to play in that spot, that's gonna be a spot that Caleb Wooden could have potentially slid into right and then you talk about the deep safeties um that's pretty much wide open for this team right donovan kaufman's gone so it's not somebody you have to compete with there Mm -hmm. um and so you need to figure out whether or not you've got a spot there because the young guys who we haven't seen hit the field yet the tyler scott's the um uh, what's the other kid that I'm 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 trying? Let me I just not Colton Hood. Uh, let me just read through this list. Terrence Love is the other one I was yep. trying to think of. Yep. Um, Laquan Robinson that's coming over, right? Like those those guys are uh, Jaron Thompson, the transfer that Sylvester came over Smith. from Texas. Sylvester Smith. Those guys are are going to they're going to demand that the coaches give them a look, right? And I don't think that anybody in this defensive secondary has the benefit of I've been here longer. I don't think any of them do. So yeah. they're going to have to go out there and earn their spots. And there's a lot of young, hungry guys that want to come, pl- come play basketball. I mean, basketball, I'm thinking <laughs> football for this team at the safety position. So he's going to need to step up. He's going to need yeah. to step up for sure. Auburn needs a point guard, damn it. And Caleb wouldn't <laughs> be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Last one on the defensive side of the ball. Let's let's talk about JD Ram. Uh, obviously, I'm looking at guys like Han Lee. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he 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 could he could be that dude at that position. Uh, you already mentioned Keontae Scott. I'm curious to see if Keontae stays at one of the boundary corners or if they move him back inside. Curious to see how that plays out. But I'm looking at. Where, where JD comes into play here. And, and I think this is an important injuries has kind of hurt him to be fair. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think this is an important spring for him. Thoughts, fellas. Yeah. JD. Um, def- I mean, he showed flashes here and there. Um, and, and I think his upside potential is really good. Um, McGriff is back. Yeah. Right. And, you know, the secondary, and the absence of a pass rush is obviously really important, you know, to be able to to cover. Um, JD said he showed good ball skills um, when I, the chances that I got to see him in practice. And man, and he's playing for a coach. I think McGriff coming back was big for him. Now we've heard this from a lot of the players. I mean, they were very happy that McGriff was coming back. Yes. Uh, so obviously Zach Etheridge is gone, um, but there is some continuity in that position room. Uh, and I think it, you know, I want to go back to something I said about like, um, it's not like you, like all the experience kind of left. So like nobody really has the benefit of I'm the, the next man up because all the playing time left. <laughs> 
Yeah, Caleb Wooden, I think, is the only one that's played any significant yeah. minutes on this team. And he, he really just started getting some minutes at the end of last year he did. when Keontae Scott got hurt and Donovan right. Kaufman was hurting him. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like he came into the season, oh, I'm finna be the dude this year. It was like, all right, well, you'll be the, the dude behind the dude. Right, yeah. So I thought it was a really good point. I mean, again, like I said, you, all the playing time left. So nobody has significant enough experience to claim seniority, really, and just say, I'm the next guy up. And then when you get new coaches, it really just doesn't matter to them. In the first year of a new defensive coordinator, how much do they care about your seniority? If I were a player, I would assume none. So if I'm J.D. Ron, uh, I'm busting ass this spring to try to make a move up that depth chart and be in the two deep. Now, I don't know if there's a scenario where he's not in the two deep, but if if you but if you if you drag ass in the spring, you could end up there. Yeah, yeah. and I mean uh, th that's the reality for him. So uh, you know, again, uh, another guy who we heard his name. You know, in in the fall in fall camp, right when they're like, "Oh man, this guy's doing great," <laughs> and we hear these names, and then the season gets there, and it's like they didn't have the greatest camp in the history of college football, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. JD was one of those names that. You know, we were consistently here. He's he's doing good. He's moving up the jump chart. He's he's killing guys. And then the season gets there, and we're like, where is he? <laughs> right. Yeah. So you know, you can only ride that height for so long. You know, there's some reason that they didn't put him on the field. If it was truly the guys in front of him had more experience, then we should see him quite a bit this fall. <laughs> if not, he failed somewhere this spring. So I, I like that name as another guy who could, who should be looking to have a big spring. All right, gentlemen. Listen, we talk defense. Let's switch. Let's switch the size of the of the ball here, and let's talk offense. I have Holden three Gurner. guys. <laughs> Besides QB, right? You can say the whole QB room for all I care, right? The whole QB room needs to, somebody. Somebody. It's Thor's job QB to lose, though. Huh? It's Thor's job to lose, Caesar. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, my bad. All right, hey, so, he, he, that, that means he could still lose it though. Okay, yeah, that's true. That's true. The word yeah, is true. still in that sentence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I'm, I'm showing you the list of guys, and again, it, we're we're not talking QBs tonight because that obviously we could talk about QB. I mean, we've been we've had whole shows dedicated to the QB room. I have three guys from from the offensive side of the ball. I want to know your thoughts. Tight end Michael Riley Ducker. Mm. Wide receiver Camden Brown. Mm. Mm. And Mike's guy, wide receiver Jay Fair. Mm. Mm. Michael Riley Ducker, Camden Brown, and Jay Fair from the offensive side of the ball. Let's just start with let's just start with with Michael Riley Ducker. It, and it's not because these guys, I mean, again, these are talented guys, but again, they have not had a chance to really show what they can do. And I think this is an important spring for these three. Start with Michael Riley. Uh Mike, you've you've had a lot to say about him. Uh yeah, I've got a pretty decent relationship with Michael Riley. Look, man, at the end of the day, Holden Gardner needs to be the guy throwing Michael Riley the ball. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm missing you guys <laughs> Michael is okay something surprising <laughs> happened right we did a fireside with uh, Holden Robbie and Luke Deal Luke had intimated that this would be his last season of college football but he's back now if you know me you know I love me some Luke Deal great kid amazing person um, however, Luke didn't have a catch last year mm. and his blocking left some things to be desired in my opinion. So, uh, I pointed this out first and, you know, when we went to the tape, we, we looked at it. Michael Riley Ducker is far and above the best blocker in that position room. Yeah. I don't think it's particularly, that's not close. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. He's got he's just as fast as the other guys. And he's got like he's got great hands with a mean streak. 
come on, man. Michael Riley is a dog, and and I think that he could make have a meteoric rise up that that deal because if Auburn plays a lot of twelve personnel, there's going to be opportunity for him to get on the field quite a bit. But you got to jump up into that top two. So Michael Riley Ducker, yes, I know Rivaldo Fairweather. Everybody's going to talk about him. We expect great things from him. Rivaldo could improve his blocking as well. Give me the guy that does it all. Hear me yeah. out. I don't know that Michael Riley Ducker isn't a better tight end right now than Rivaldo Fairweather. I take. I'm, I, so I, I don't disagree as far as overall tight end. Like, I think he does enough of everything to be the more prototypical. And Mike and I have talked about this before. I yeah. think he's the more prototypical tight end. Now, Valdo is far and above the best pass catcher in that room. Just because he presents such – if they lined it up, I don't think Micah's got a chance of be, of being faster than uh, Rivaldo Fairway. Oh, I don't know. I, we, might have, we, might, we might have to ask him now. I'm yeah, him right we, now we might have to. I don't think. I don't think he's got a shot. I don't think. I don't think Micah got it like that. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get a statement from him right now. <laughs> <laughs> you smoking, Rivaldo, or what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What? What so I, I just think that now, as far as his hands and his ability to catch, I think that he's in, he's in that conversation with him. I think that that Valdo is a better. Um, He's a bigger threat because of the speed that he presents at that spot, um, and yeah, I like I, I like Micah a lot. I listen. I you've if you've watched the film with me, you've heard me say good things about Micah O'Reilly. I just okay. don't know that um, he's give he's been given the opportunity, and I think some of that is his fault. If he if he was being honest, I think he would say some of that is my fault. Hmm. Uh, but look, man, do what you need to do. Be where you need to be to be there ready to go and then make them make them make a decision about why what do you say late. mike what do you say mike oh yeah wait i, I need a definitive answer here he's, he's, he's bullshit <laughs> okay. all right well listen before but let's move on in the interest of time camden brown ike uh what are your thoughts about that name ah uh, yeah listen uh cam brown I, i'll throw two names back in your direction in response to that Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson. Those are the guys that you have to fight off to keep playing time. Mm. And you've got to figure out a way to be the guy at outside receiver because they're not going to move you to the slot. He's not going to play slot receiver. Right. So Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson, how do you remain ahead of them? Because you, you've been here longer. So you should be able to pick up the playbook a little bit more quickly. You've been through the program. It's it's time now to figure out whether or not this is the place that's going to allow you the opportunity to be the guy or if you need to decide where you want to go elsewhere. Because I know Camden Brown wants to go to the NFL. This isn't a question about in my yeah. mind whether or not he wants to play in the NFL. And he needs some tape to, again, erase the narrative that's out there about him, about he can't catch and he can't get separate, he can't do, he can't, can't, can't. All right, this spring, show me what you got, because Perry Thompson's not even there yet, bro. So if he gets on campus and he starts showing out, Cam Brown's snaps are going to diminish quickly. Yeah. Mm. Quickly. Mm. All right, Mike. Uh, Let's talk about him. Jay yeah, Fair. Jay Fair is a leader on this team. His position as a leader is not in question. Um, and Hugh Freeze said recently in a press conference that he feels like player-led teams are the best ones. Now, I don't think that means turning over a leadership to the player. I think what he's trying to say is players that hold other players accountable create the best team dynamic. Uh and we know some of that is happening for sure. Jay Fair is a big part of that. Now, um, he's about the same size as Robert Lewis. As a matter of fact, I think Robert Lewis actually weighs less than Jay, Jay Fair. He does. Mm. Yeah, they're both quick. Um, but at this point in his career, I don't think that Robert Lewis's experience outweighs Jay's, particularly in the SEC. Um, but... Um, 
if we're to believe what some people say about the QB position, y'all, Peyton Thorne can't be a good QB unless every receiver catches balls behind their backs with a blindfold on. So these receivers are definitely going to have to raise their game because I'm not sure you can depend on the guy throwing you the ball to set you up for much. If the leader in the clubhouse right now wins the job, they're all going to have to be much better <laughs> than they were last year. Uh, and, you know, and 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 that's what it is. There are two sides to passing and catching, right? Like, and at the end of the day, they took a lot of heat for a, the failures of the pass game, right? So you improve that situation by making a big jump this spring develop chemistry with as many this is why it's important guys to narrow down your qb race quickly and get those guys reps with the guy that, that's going to be throwing to them so they can figure out what his tendencies are you know you know when he's you know where the ball is at when he's late on certain passes i mean all this stuff it it, it goes into having a good pass game and, and auburn needs a good pass game <laughs> next year to try to even out some of the load on the run game because that I think can be really good. So, you know, that's where I'm at with Jay fair right now. I think that um, he's got a great shot to be a really an all sec receiver. If he can get the targets or can these guys be the, the, the old school Courtney Taylor type where you don't get a ton of targets, but you just catch everything that's thrown at you somehow. Go right. back, go back and watch the tape on Courtney Taylor. He fell to the ground a lot to catch passes. There was, there weren't always a ton of, of yards after the catch because of how he had to, what he had to do to catch the ball. I, I think mm -hmm. that might be the case for a lot of these guys uh, this season in that in that room. So Jay Fair, Camden Brown, absolutely agree with Ike said about Camden. Like you know, you've got to crush these narratives about you quick because the other guys are coming. Like he didn't bring these guys in to sit. Right. And if you're dropping wide open passes, you're going to be on the bench next year. And I'm going to roll with the dude I recruited. <laughs> right. That's a top 50 player overall. So, yeah, I mean, look, the, the urgency is big for them if they want to keep these young guys at bay and get their time in. And, I, and, and the reason why I picked Jay Fair is, I mean, Mike Cameron Brown talented. But I was shocked. I mean, I think Jay Fair was, was Jay Fair. Was he dealing with injury at some points last year? Uh, well, nothing too major. Yeah, nothing too. But major. he seemed to have disappeared he was sick in his for the offense. Bowl game. Yeah, yeah, he, he had sick a for the flu. Bowl. He disappeared in his offense, and I don't want to see him disappearing through spring. That, but I he wasn't. That, but they took him off the field, though. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's, there, there are a lot of dynamics as to what led to it, that. But I not think this year that's going to change. Yeah, I think yeah. I think Derek Nix is. He's going to have his hands a little bit more in orchestrating the rotations at all spots, as opposed to last year. I think they let uh, – and this, this, this is going to sound like a shot at Marcus Davis, but let me finish the full thought. Instead of just letting Marcus Davis manage who goes in and out, I think part of the game plan is going to be we want this many snaps for these guys because we're orchestrating our game plan around them. If, if last year they were doing that – then you would have seen more Jay Fair and more uh, VAR because yeah, yeah, they yeah. knew that those were the two guys. Yeah, but, you said it repeatedly. Right, but they didn't go into a game and say, we're going to make sure we get the ball to those two. I think Derek Nix is going to change that. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will, we will definitely see. And we see you guys' comments. We're going to get to those after the break. But you are watching the Midweek Rapport. Do us a favor and share this video with those who are looking for great Auburn content out on YouTube. Smash that like button and subscribe if you just now found, found us. We'll pay some bills, come right back, and we will read your comments and talk basketball. This edition of The War Report is brought to you by our generous sponsors. The Opelika Rage Room in Opelika, Alabama. The Rage Room is a place where anger and stress find their ultimate release. Call or text 334-777-6688. Set up a session today or check them out online at opelikaragerooom.com. Golden's Cast Iron. Whether you work out, grill out, or chill out, you deserve the best life possible and Golden's Cast Iron is here to provide the tools to help you do it. Check them out at goldenscastiron.com. 
Thanks to all the sponsors of The War Report. Thank you to those of you who are members. Don't forget to get that membership active, man. The offseason does not stop the membership content. In fact, we are continually adding to that, man, and we are going to continue to revamp and make sure that you guys are getting your money's worth. $6.99 per month gets you to the patron level, and we appreciate everybody who continues to support us in that way. If you want to gift a membership to somebody, you can do that right now from the live chat, just like Auburn Dad has done today. We appreciate him for supporting in that way um, and they can get a free month of membership on you uh, if you want to listen to audio versions you can check us out off the auburn express or you can get uh some other voices maybe you want to hear some other people talk auburn sports well we got two great recommendations for you the uptempo podcast and the college loop are talking auburn sports uh spe specifically want to shout out the college excuse me the Up Tempo podcast for their baseball coverage right now. They're doing a good job with that in the college loop for their softball coverage right now. Uh, so if you guys are into those sports, make sure you are checking out those Auburn voices that are keeping you guys informed on all things Auburn sports. Mm. We'll get to some of you guys comments in the chat here. Oda Smith says the entire team needs to have a big spring. I mean, come on. I ain't mad at that. Hey, man, yeah, man. I, I mean, everybody can play better. So I agree that everybody could play better. Um, yeah. Agreed, Oda. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to disagree with that. Yeah. Uh, Oda Smith says, Camden Brown, Jason Jones, freaking Steiner. Jason Jones was somebody I pointed out this morning that I think uh, – I don't think he, he needs a big spring from the standpoint of he's not going to, yeah. like, be here. But I think he needs to take the the role of, hey, I'm going to be the monster in, in, in the middle of this defense this year and, and figure out how to get acclimated to whatever they're asking him to do this season. Uh, this is a big year for him. It's a, and he said it himself, right? This isn't me trying to put more pressure on Jason Jones. This is last year. This is a prove it year for him as far as his NFL aspirations are concerned. And it's starting this spring. He looks the part right now. I'll tell you that. You know, saw him at, at that first open uh, practice, and, and he looks physically ready for the season already. Yeah. Uh, get here. Auburn Dad just gifted five War Report memberships. Appreciate you. Good, sir. Lawrence Robinson, good to have you here. Says Steiner has flashed, but his consistency is awful. Oh, man. You know, I think that it's so mental for him. Um like How many games did we see where, like, he would just choose the wrong gap and then – touchdown or yeah <laughs> yeah it's just there's something going on there you know in terms of processing the game you know fast enough that you know it's going on with him so he's going to have to make that jump like i said these young guys are coming and uh even if you are more physically ready to play and you've got experience doesn't matter man if you're running down the wrong gap and other teams are scoring <laughs> yeah. yeah go with the young guys Corey Dub says Wooden needs to do sp speed drills this off season. Yeah, he got walked down. Um, speed kills really bad. Yeah, yeah, but when the other guys got more than you, it kills you. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, Let's see what you did there. Mount mm -hmm. Miller House says Coy Moore too. What you think about Coy Moore, guys? Oh man, you know we didn't talk about him in the on the offense, but. Yeah, I mean, this is his last year of college football. I believe it is. Yeah, yeah, he's. I think yeah, he's yeah, I think he's done after this. Yeah, so I think um, I almost put him in the same boat as. Injuries hurt him last year. Yeah. It did. That's that's really been the thing that's hampered him the most. Yeah, in his collegiate career is because I I think he was actually in a good place going into last season as far as what the expectations were going to be and his knowledge of what was going on. And then he, he missed a bunch of practices and, you know, summer yeah. workouts because he was injured and that moved him further and further down the depth chart um, just because they hadn't got an opportunity to really figure out where to put him. And because he's one of those guys that um, he doesn't, and this, this is not exclusive to coach you free. So don't think I'm trying to say something negative about coach you freeze. Coaches tend to have the prototype of what they want to see at certain positions, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I want my X position to look like this. I want my Y position to look like this. I want my Z position to look like this. I'm talking about wide receiver spots. And Coy Moore doesn't really fit into any of those boxes neatly enough for Coach Freeze. And so they, they, didn't, they never really figured out where to play him and how he was going to fit into this offense 
Um, and then when he got injured, it doesn't allow you to really see it on the field to get a good picture of that. And so when you come back in, you just got to like, well, this is kind of how we built it now. So you just got to fit somewhere and he never really fit. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. All right, Auburn Dad for Life says, I'm worried that if we don't have enough playing time to go around, we're going to lose a lot of these talented players to the portal. Nah, Auburn Dad, that's the game. That's every school deals yeah. with this, <laughs> right? If, if so. you're going to be a, a school full of talent, this is going to be a problem. That's going to happen every, every single year. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's we. We freak out about it at Auburn, but the truth is, is that every school deals with this. They've just got so much talent. No, you know, Alabama doesn't really worry that. I mean, they may, they might be worrying now. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, but, teams yeah. like Georgia and o Ohio State, you know, the teams that are perennially in that conversation, they have yeah, this man. issue, and it's becoming an increasingly big issue in the era of the transfer portal. Yep. But you know, because you're the good team, all of the players that are leaving somebody else's sinking ship or mm -hmm. trying to go up in ranks they're looking to come to your program so right. you're going to retool did y'all see the thing where Saban was talking about how like uh players throwing helmets and after the games is contributed to the reason that he retired <laughs> players throwing, throwing helmets? helmets yeah the, yeah the behavior after the game um Chris Lowe wrote an article uh, where he talked to Saban and Saban talked about all the things that contributed to his decision to retire and Saban was saying, like, you know, we, you know, guys will be in the locker room slamming helmets and they, they didn't know they like they know how to take losing and move on. And, and he felt strongly you should behave a certain way in winning and losing. But then when he would have a talk with them, he started to realize that his message was no longer resonating. I, listen, Coach yeah. Freeze just said he needs to figure out how to change his message because yeah. he what he used to say doesn't really yeah, motivate yeah. the same way. Mm. So yeah. uh, this is going, this is actually I think a bigger problem than people realize for long tenured coaches in the new landscape of what college sports is, not just college. Because listen, Gino Oriema talked about this with uh, women's basketball in the in the age of NIL. He's like, I don't know how you coach anymore. Like, how do you build a program in this era? Like we're fine because we've got the program that people want to come to. South Carolina's fine. That's the program where people want to go. But if you're not in that echelon, getting talent is hard. Maintaining yeah. talent is hard. And then you've got to figure out how to keep the egos and the temperament of all of these talented players in check so that you can play at a high level. Every That's not easy, man, especially yeah. when money's involved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's difficult. I thought, I mean, I encourage you to go. It was an excellent piece by Chris Lowe. Like, uh, Interesting. beautifully written. Did your brand says got to get Cobb involved. So he's throwing out Cobb's name. Yeah. We, we burned his red shirt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, he got his red shirt burned last year. Um, and Cobb is another, that, this whole running back room came back and that blew my mind away. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of hard to uh, name someone from this from the running back room because it's like it's the same problem yeah, that existed last year. Yeah, I'm shocked that they all came back. So, um, will there be enough ball to go around? I know that early in camp, um, Derek Nix is likes Demari Alston a lot. Jarquez is kind of like the obvious guy in there, but Cobb showed really good pass catching abilities and. You know, Bati, you know, the kind of change of back, like we saw them use him early, but then as the season went on, his role dwindled quite a bit. So what you do with all these guys, I don't know. You know, uh, Bati's going to get his touches in the special teams. But, man, I, you know, Cobb is just – I'll I'm interested to see. He, he looked really good in the spots that we saw him last year. I think he played extremely well. All right. Well, listen. Let's switch gears, gentlemen, and let's talk. Let's talk basketball. Auburn got a big win on the road against Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, improving to twenty-three and seven on the season. Final game is this Saturday at home, Neville Arena against Georgia. Auburn looks to close out the year twenty-four and seven. Should they get a win over the Bulldogs? And the way things are playing out, I know people were talking about the scenarios of what needs to happen. And, you know, they asked Dr. Strange and he went into the future and saw all of the scenarios of which Auburn get a, a to win out the conference. I don't think that's going to happen because one of them involved Tennessee actually losing to South Carolina. They're beating them by 10 right now with under four minutes left to go in the game. Uh, 
But with South Carolina losing, it looks like Auburn is in a position to be one of the top four teams to finish out the regular season. Of course, Auburn has to take care of business Saturday to secure that. But Auburn could be one of the top four teams and get a double buy in the SEC tournament. Uh, how do we feel about Auburn in the SEC tournament? The past two seasons, they've been bounced in their first game of the tournament. Last year was Arkansas. The year prior to that, it was Texas A&M. How are we feeling about this year's team, a team that, you know, of course, every team has its weaknesses, but this team appears to be more of a complete team. How do we feel going into the tournament? I'll start with I, you, Ike. Oh, go, go ahead, Mike. I was going to say, Ike and I watched this team go on, or like play the neutral side in Atlanta and run Indiana off the floor. Hmm. I honestly, I don't know if I felt better about a neutral site Auburn basketball team than I do about this one. Mm-hmm. Road is one thing. Neutral is a whole different story in my book. These exactly. guys can they, they can wreck shop at a neutral site. So, you know, look, a lot of a lot was made about Auburn on the road this year. And I think you know, I heard saw others point this out. We pointed it out that if you looked at like the top 10 to 12 teams, everybody was struggling on the road. Tell me who was the, just the best road team of all this year. There, everybody's lost, most of those guys' losses came on the road. <laughs> yeah, I actually looked at this, and everyone who's ranked above Auburn, the vast majority, uh, if if they have, and everybody has multiple losses, they all came on the road to somewhere right. outside of their building, like they all did. Yeah. And now Auburn's lost more games on the road than those other teams, but it's not as if there's a team out there who just doesn't lose games on the road. Yeah, I think this this team is hitting their stride right at the right time. Um, look, uh, it's it's crazy and it's sad to think about, but you know, without Leo Berman, you know, he was I thought he was playing really well over the last couple games in terms of going out and not just being like a a, a, a resting like somebody needs a break. He was scoring. He, he you know a guy like Leo coming in and giving you four points, you know, and and a steal and a couple of rebounds in in the few minutes that he played is huge. Especially on a neutral side game against another top twenty-five team. So Chris Moore came in and played well. He did play well. I like his. He came in and played well. I, look, look I, this is. I still think this is Bruce Pearl's best team. I still think this. I mean, one of those seven losses that they're sitting on right now was against Baylor, the first game of the season. And and I don't know if I've ever felt better about Auburn after a loss than I did after that game. I was like, they're going to be just fine. And look and at I'm, them now. And by the way, App State is 26 and 5. I'm like, that Come actually on, was a pretty good team yeah. they lost to. I mean, App, App State was always a good team. It's just because their name is App State, people just assume that you're not supposed to lose to them, that they're, they're a good team. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it helps to be in that top four going, you know, into the uh, SEC tournament. You don't want to have to play that extra game because you already know you're going dance. Yeah. You know, what you can do is you can improve your seating, especially with other teams going on a losing streak at the end and you going on a winning streak at the end. You know, I think uh, Alabama, like somehow, weirdly to me, Auburn has a better record. They split the season series and every bracketology has Alabama with a higher seed than Auburn. And I just don't get it. Guys, there's an AP writer. Right now, right now, uh, uh, um, that has Auburn not ranked in his top twenty-five. Yeah, that it, that's it's 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 all because of the away from Neville Arena narrative. That's, that's the only crazy. reason that anybody has anything negative to say about Auburn is that. Well, that's not true. It is quad one, right? Auburn hasn't done well in quad one so they're saying okay against the better teams auburn hasn't performed better and then they they can't quote unquote can't win outside of neville arena but that's that's where that comes from though dave borges at dave borges on twitter if you want to go give him a piece of your mind but this guy sucks <laughs> he's awful <laughs> i'm like not in the top 25 like what team are you watching what planet are you on that auburn's not a top like i can i can deal with i think they're not bordering on top 10 i think they're 18 or you know i can deal with that because there's some sub- subjectivity there that I, you know what i mentioned about the away 
from home deal that you could reasonably factor in and say, I don't think they're 13. I think they're 16, but not in the top 25. Come on, man. Like we're talking about Bruce Pearl, potentially his best team. And I've never felt better about an Auburn team getting out of the round of 32. Yes. Better than I do about this team. Hear yes. me out, man. This team's getting out of the round of 32. They have the yeah. senior leadership. They're deeper than previous Auburn teams. They can shoot very well. This this team is like, man, they just have to go. If they lay an egg, sure, it, it, you know, they could lose. But Auburn is going to be, you know, with, with the transfers that they brought in that have had experience in college basketball, Cheney, Denver, uh, um, uh, Chad Baker, Mazzara, it makes them that dangerously senior team. Not totally senior, but you understand what I'm saying. Well, it's yes. not, not actual seniors, but – experienced yeah. team that can give a younger but talented team a lot of trouble oh yeah for sure they're crafty they play together they play with with great energy and effort they're one of the best defensive i think auburn is the top defensive uh, top five defensive key team in the country uh uh if you look at uh Pom pomeroy's rankings so you know like I, I, and if you're if you want me to choose a team, I'm choosing the team that plays that kind of defense and scores in the 80s every single time. I, I, they have they have a chance to do really well. This this tournament is about keeping the right type of momentum going into the NCAA tournament every year. Every year, it's about momentum. In momentum. This that's it, man. They can win, but you want that good juju going in there. Like getting wiped out by Texas A&M, I think it was last year in the first. Game. Two years ago. Two years yeah, ago. Yeah. Yeah. It left everybody with this. Here we go again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I don't have that feeling about this team. I don't think fans should either. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is at least a sweet 16 team. At the very least, a sweet 16 team. Um, I your thoughts on this team and what you expect to see over the next few weeks as we approach tournament play. Um, listen, I, I've been high on this team all year. I'm going to continue to be high on the team. They have, they've shown me something offensively of late that mm. they've not shown the entirety of the season. And I, and, and what I mean by that is not how many points they're scoring. It's how consistently they're seeking good shots. Yes. I find myself less and less every single game saying, what was that shot? Like, why did, why, why did, why did we take that shot right there? And like even going back to the Tennessee game, which they lost, I didn't sit there and look at it and be like, yo, what I that wasn't a good like they were scoring the basketball in that game. Dalton Connect just went crazy at the end of right, it. Right. But Auburn was getting buckets and they were getting good looks. And every single game, even even the Kentucky game that we lost, Auburn was getting good looks in that game. They right. weren't making them, but they were getting good. And so when I find when I see a team that's consistently getting good looks. I say to myself, okay, that's a team who understands what they're doing on offense. They're not just doing stuff. They understand what they need to do on offense. They've learned how to play through um, Jonai Broom a lot better than they had been previously. And they've, they've not had games where the defense just looked completely overwhelmed, except for Florida. The Florida game defense looked like, I don't, I don't even know if they showed up defensively to that game as far as their effort is concerned every other game they they looked good defensively and i'm including tennessee because though dawson connect was splashing all over the place they weren't they those were a lot of good contested looks like he, he they made it tough i yeah. don't know what mike is reacting to right now but it's big apparently oh uh three-point game tennessee and south carolina <laughs> oh, oh really okay <laughs> yeah three, nice. three point game. I, was, I was i looked over and i was like <laughs> how much time's left in it uh 47, 47 seconds. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, Tennessee will probably still win. Um, I'm gonna grab a. The, again, I, I've been impressed. Again, I think I think Jalen Williams getting injured opened the door for us to see aspects of other people's. Because because I think throughout much of the season it was about getting guys to play a certain role. Yeah. And I think as Jalen Williams got injured, it was like okay. Now I can kind of spread my wings a little bit and show what I can do. We've seen that with Chad Beck and Mazzara. Uh, we saw that again with Denver Jones. Like Denver Jones is coming into his own. Um, Aiden Holloway uh, is is playing better. Like like 
there are certain things that are happening at the right time with this team that, that makes me that gives me um really a lot of excitement about how they're going to play going into the tournament season i mean again i hate uh, we gotta stay we gotta stay healthy i hate the injury um uh to brain fart guys we are we are, are. Berman. i hate the injury to him because he was playing better uh prior to his injury a lot of people are playing better janai has just been a model of consistency with this team no matter yeah. whether he has a fast like he starts the game fast or he comes on late in the second half if he comes on late in the second half, he's going to give you a good 15, 16 points a game, right? Um, Jalen Williams, I mean, our concern is when he comes back that was he going to still have that killer instinct? He still has it. He's, he's still been playing the I, same man, way he's been. I loved Jay Will's game from last night. Like that, yeah. that's, that's, the only, that's the only thing I've ever wanted from him, man. Like, I don't care if you – but he was taking such good shots, man. He was being so patient, and he was getting to his spots. I was like, bro – he came in that, on that lane that, with that little intention. Yeah, that little hook shot has been it's dangerous. Money. Yeah, it's money. Yeah, I like that. He tried that a lot last year as well, too. It was just he it's like he got the touch just right on that shot, and it looks good, man. It's dangerous. He gets in there, and because you have to respect so many aspects of the way that he can put the ball in the basket, it's easier to fake you out. Yeah. He takes the pressure yeah, yeah. off of uh, off of Janai Broom because of what he can do. Because Janai can just he comes down the lane, Janai can just pass the ball to him, right? Yeah. yeah. People want to double on Janai. Jalen Williams is in the lane. You can't do that. So I, I I like the fact that he's come on as Janai has been playing well as well. So yeah, absolutely. I'm excited about this team. What I what are you thinking uh, about this team and how far that they can potentially go in the tournament? Man? I mean, I think the sky's the limit, right? I don't I don't think that there are a lot of teams better than Auburn from top to bottom. Uh, there are teams that I think are better than Auburn, but like I, th- I think Houston's probably one of the best teams in the country, right? I think UConn's a really UConn. good team. Um, I think yeah, that UConn's Purdue's scary. a really good team. Um they look I mean, they look real they look real vulnerable at times. I mean a lot I mean, of people do, but yeah, but but I think I think you know you, I would put Auburn in in I don't know that I could find fifteen better teams than Auburn in the country, but there are some some scary matchups out there for Auburn, right? Like if you shoot the three ball pretty well, like Kentucky should scare everybody because Kentucky sure. can score, sure, and and you you can play good defense on Kentucky and they can still score. Yeah. Tennessee should scare everybody because they have a good enough defense to lock whoever down. If you're not a good offensive team. Good luck for playing yeah. Tennessee. They're gonna they're gonna make your night hell. And if you're a good offensive team, they can still score the basketball this year. That's the difference between this year's Tennessee team and any of the other teams that Tennessee has taken to the tournament recently. Uh, so Tennessee is gonna be a tough out, but Auburn is right there in that conversation with teams that Missouri saw it last night. If you're gonna if you're gonna play stand around and one on one ball, good luck. Good luck. Have at it. It's going to be yeah. one against five defense, and you're going to yeah. have to score in a lot of creative ways. That's why Georgia didn't play well against Auburn. The, you, you don't play the right kind of offense to threaten Auburn. You either need to have a Superman out there or you need to have outstanding shooters everywhere. Anything in between, they locking that up, and you can go enjoy the rest of your night somewhere. Um, and they're scoring this year. So, I don't know, man. I mean, it's it's a team that can go all the way. It's going it, to a tournament. Again, we already said it's about momentum and matchups. Uh, so you get the right momentum and you get the right matchups. You'll walk all the way to the end. Yeah, I think this tournament next week is going to is going to tell us a lot about what kind of momentum Marvin has going into the big dance. Um, can't get I, I don't want to see. I need to see them advance to, to the semifinal. I want to yeah, send them. Advance. I agree. That, so. that, that would make me feel good about their chances in the tournament. You know, yeah. advance to the semifinals, uh, keep that positive, you know, ideally win the whole damn thing. As a right. Of fact. <laughs> right, right, right. But at the very least, if you get bounced, they'll get bounced in your first game. Yeah, no, I think that they should they should <laughs> win the first game regardless of who the matchup is. I, I honestly think it'd be disappointing if they're not at least in the championship game. I think you should win mm. two uh, next week to be in a good spot because what that shows me is that – in, in tournament time, it's about being able to stack wins in a short amount of time, right? And so you are built to be able to do that with your depth, 
right? You're going to play guys low minutes, and they're going to be teams that you're going to face it. They're going to have guys that are, need to play 30 minutes to be effective. Mm-hmm. Um, and Auburn doesn't need that right now to be effective. So you should be able to be good in turning time. Yeah. Good stuff, gentlemen. Let's get to the comments. Uh, Stephen Neely says, should we care more about the seed number or satellite location? Um, I think seat number, I think is going to be the most important thing. I don't think just because Auburn fans travel really well, I'm not as worried. Now, me personally, I'd like to be somewhere closer, right? Mm-hmm. But just for me, that's selfish. That ain't got nothing to do with how I think they're fair, but I think they'll be fine wherever they're located. I think it's more about who they're playing. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Daniel. Denny says, do you think Bruce Pearl could take the Ohio State job? No. I didn't I didn't think that that was a, a thing. Yeah. yeah, no, no. Okay. Yeah, there was there was a people who were worried about Indiana, but that recently they, the Indiana announced my coach was going to come back. Uh, I wasn't ever really worried about that. I don't know why other people were. I think Bruce Pearl is, number one, I think he's – getting closer to the end of his yeah, career. Yeah, he's back half of his career. Like, why? And, and I don't think he wants to go somewhere and start over. And I think he appreciates what Auburn did enough for his career. Because he said this himself in a recent interview. He was like, honestly, um, he'd still be at Tennessee if they didn't push him out. He didn't want to leave. And he felt as if Tennessee and the administration over there kind of overreacted to the entire situation and so it wasn't about like he 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 needed to move on because they wanted to to clear that that situation up but he was well, fine he, yeah but they, he got hit with a show cause so like he but, wouldn't have... yeah even then he's he would uh, you have to watch the interview uh where he said it i'll see if i can find the link for it but he was like yeah t- tennessee regretted the move moving on from coach pearl the, at least the administrator at that time was Initially, like yeah i probably yeah. I, th- I think i overreacted to the whole situation and they'd have been fine um and so uh yeah i just i just don't think that coach pearl is looking to move anywhere so i don't i don't really know why the the panic about that i just i think i think people are just built to panic so they're just like oh no don't take away the, the you know like they, they did they did this every I every think time louisville, louisville was looking for a new coach yeah. and his name oh uh, no yeah and uh, let me say let me go ahead and just squash all that that right here right um the louisville situation was a lot of people behind the scenes pushing a narrative for other reasons he was never going to take the Louisville job. Guys, we had him on our show <laughs> three days before certain people on the beat started pushing the Bruce Pearl to Louisville rumors for whatever reason they were pushing it. And everything he said pointed to him staying at Auburn. Then Alan Green comes out with the video. We locked him up. Like, okay, what were you guys expecting? His daughter was on Twitter showing off her new Auburn shirts. Like, <laughs> you know, he just bought a lake house out on Lake Martin. <laughs> I mean, he, he wasn't definitely wasn't behaving like a guy who was about to take a job anywhere. Bruce Pearl is going to be one of those popular names that gets floated so that yeah. somebody's agent can put pressure on the school to give them a raise. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And you got to remember, I, I, a lot of these guys are using the same agent. <laughs> Did you? you I, I don't know if you guys saw the article about the orchestration of. Uh, uh, and Sexton represents Norvell and DeBoer and Saban and all these people. And they were saying that Kalen DeBoer actually turned down a $9 million raise slash extension mid-season at Washington because he knew through their same agent that Saban was getting ready to retire. <laughs> you know, Norvell, all the, these guys, are, it's one massive conspiracy but a true one (laughs) so you know bp staying at auburn anytime you hear that don't give that any life that's just people trying to get clicks from you and spread rumors that don't matter and and, and to ike's point you know if you know bruce pearl and you've talked to him you know what a loyal person he is yeah auburn revived his career they've loved him here they've they've given him everything he's asked for and a little bit more and his family loves it here. He's not going anywhere, man. Come on. For at what point? Why you already have a you're already a place where you can win a championship. 
You already almost did it. Team. Yeah, yeah. Almost you already did took it. the team to a Final Four. You're not going to get left out because you're at Auburn. Right. Right? Like, you know, he knows that. that. He He's getting talent here, so that's not an issue. It's not as if, you know. Number one picks people, every year, right? There are people who, I mean, and this is this is not an exaggeration. There are young players right now who see Auburn as a more of a basketball. Players, now I'm not talking about fans, that Correct. see Auburn as more of a basketball school than they do as a football school because of the recency of the success of the program. And they're young, so, right? So they don't remember all that old Indiana stuff. The hell? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that that is that narrative has changed as far as like where you can go and win. Auburn's on the list of those teams now, yeah. and Coach Pearl isn't showing any signs that he's getting worse at coaching. Yeah, if anything, he's coaching his ass off right now. He's been he's been an amazing coach the last couple of years. The way that he reinvents the team every single year to fit the personnel, masterful. I just I I, I again. Auburn's committing money to him every time he asks for something. You turn around, and you know, all right, cool. Well, that, that's what you want, coach. We're like, nah, right, man, he's right, good, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, would you, Ike? Would you rather be a blue blood or a new blood? Right now, well, college I, basketball. I mean, if you are a blue blood that's actually continuing to win, then I'd rather be a blue blood. But none of them <laughs> seem to be doing that. So, so I'll like, take like, new blood, bit. baby. You can argue new Kansas. Blood. Can, yeah, okay, Kansas. You can argue but, Kansas, but I mean, but. To, at, yeah, to Kansas. your point, Kansas is probably the only one. They yeah, the other ones not there. so much. Yeah, yeah so right. You, UConn, UConn is the only other blue blood I think that's still actually winning. Fact. Indiana, they just, they just, they just started. They just started back when, like, they they have been kind of. But see, they, like, India, it's like UConn. Like every like two or three years, they win again. Every two or yeah. three years, they gonna they gonna win another one, man. Jay yeah. Wright doesn't get enough um, credit. He's Jay Wright's an amazing coach. Um, What's going on but, with Gonzaga? They Who swear cares? they they swear they the blue bloods of, of, of the bluest of bloods. They believe nah. Smurf blood over there, according to them. <laughs> bluest of blood sound crazy. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um all right, good talk, gentlemen. Listen, let's get out of here. I right, tell the hold folks. Hold on, hold on. I want to answer this one because I I'm not I'm not gonna let this slide without us talking about ah, my, my, girl, my girl, my ladies. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. they they start SEC play in the um, SEC tournament tomorrow, tomorrow. versus I Arkansas. Dri- I am driving up there tomorrow to go cover this game. Yes. Um, I like their chances against Arkansas. If they beat Arkansas, which I expect them to, they have um, the first round by right. Yeah, first round started today, which Dang. I haven't really looked at what the the uh, situation was with oh, that. Okay. Games are going okay, on right yeah. now, but there were morning games that happened. Um, they beat Arkansas, then they have to go face LSU for a third time this season. Jesus. They split the season series with LSU so far this year. I still like their chances against LSU because even though they lost the second one, it wasn't like LSU walked all over them, and it was at LSU. So this is going to be a neutral site game. Yep. And I like Auburn's chances. I'm not saying they're going to win. I just like them to put the fear of God in them. If if McKenna Eddings continues her kind of meteoric rise and, over and these McKenna last two games, wasn't even playing yeah. playing that. Yeah, yeah, Dan. Yeah, this could be like okay. So Arkansas, little women's basketball for you guys. Um, when you know Auburn lost to Arkansas in Vault Walton by two by, points. Yeah, was it two or three? Seventy four to seventy two. Yeah, right. Was, they needed three to win. Is what probably yeah. thinking. Um. Talia Scott, uh, their leading crazy. score, she went nuts. In the, she scored 17 points in the third quarter of that game alone. You know, step back threes. They shut her down in the fourth, but not before she poured in 33 points on them, and then they won by two. So um, their next best player, or, or arguably their best player, just not that night, is Sailor uh, uh, Popenberger. She is probably not going to play tomorrow. Talia Scott is not going to play tomorrow. Um, and I'll go ahead and put the pressure on them and say this. There's no way that this team should lose to that team tomorrow. No they way. Should. They should not. I mean, that would be a massive failure by them if they lose this team. So that puts them, Ike said, in the next round against LSU. And and honesty, Scott Grayson just made first team all SEC. She's playing her best basketball right now. When the stage is the biggest, she shows up. And we've all known stars, guys, that shrink when the lights are on. Night in, night out, they'll give you numbers. But when the stage is the biggest, give me honesty, Scott Grayson to hit the winning shot. Yeah, I'm telling you, I, she, that had, girl she had she had the big ball. block versus Florida Woo! in this last game to close that game out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, um, they needed that last game. Um, uh, what was the last home game? They played Mississippi State. She put up her career high that night. Yeah, 32. yeah, yeah, thirty-two so, points. 
so yeah, honesty's balling, man. And um, I, I think this team is hungrier than a lot of teams are. Like, yeah. I just think that they, I just think they kind of just want it a little bit more than some other folks. Again, I don't know where they're gonna match up and and how they're gonna play against LSU, mm -hmm. but if if I'm sitting there on Selection Sunday, whenever it is for women's basketball, I'm hoping that line draw does not give me Auburn. Correct. I'm hoping right. that that's not who I get. Because this defense has gotten increasingly better as the season as they started to understand how they're supposed to attack teams. Crazy and they amounts found, of turnovers. They found yeah. secondary and, and tertiary offensive players to be out there and complement what Honesty's doing. It's not a team I want to play, man. They I, forced 29 turnovers, Caesar, versus uh, Mississippi State. 29 it's turnovers. Crazy, man. And, and let me tell you how well they played. Went on the road to Florida for that last game that a lot of people believe they needed to solidify their tournament resume. And they lost the turnover battle for one of the first times this season and still <laughs> won the game. Mm. This team is finding their stride. Coach Johnny Harris, if we, while we're talking about extensions, because Bruce yeah. got his, now it's time for Johnny to get hers. What, what was she originally on a five year? Uh, I think so. So she is she, she on three year or five? Yeah, right yeah, now? yeah, yeah. This is year three. It's time yeah, to renegotiate. That they. I know they, it's year three. I just didn't know how long the initial contract was. Yeah, it's it's time to have that conversation, conversation right? Yeah. Like this, she took over a team that won zero games in the SEC last year. Zero. No, I'm not 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 last year, but the year before she year took before over. Last. They went yeah. sixteen and fifteen last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Five and eleven in the SEC. Yep. Right. Two, two the SEC that, wins. The year won. before that, they went 10 and 18, 2 and 14. Two that was 14. the first year. And the year the before SEC. she got there, what was it? Goose egg. <laughs> they, they were 5 and 19. Right. Uh, zero, and, and yeah, yeah, they were over in the SEC yeah. play. That's crazy. And then to have them in the NCAA tournament in year three, this was a mess. And, and, and you know, they don't like to talk about it, but I feel like it's okay to talk about it now. They let the two best players on this team walk three after best. last season. Three best walk after last season because their attitudes weren't what she wanted for the makeup of this team. You mm. talk about having big balls as a coach. You know you're under pressure after win. year two. Yeah, yeah, and you and you and you tell them like, look, I'd rather develop and try to win with the players I have than to let your talented but bad attitude ass ruin my team. And then she took these girls and she she treated them like like look look man everybody knew how talented these guys were when we talk about messaging on the football side this is what I'm talking about man she knows where her talent is at but she made those girls believe they were good enough to win and damn it they went out and their first SEC win was the defending national champs pay her now because you're not gonna you're you don't find rising stars like this in coaching guys very often yeah you don't. Right. And, and, and John Cohen, God bless his heart, love a lot of things he did here. But he actually passed her over at Mississippi State for the promotion. Now it's the time to right the wrong, John. God doesn't give second chances like this. <laughs> or else, <laughs> brother, you got a chance to, to, to atone and repent for your sins. Johnny Harris is a. a I think he's going to do the right thing, though. Yeah, I think I think right coach, get it done. Listen. I, I was at the Alabama game, and they lost that game in Tuscaloosa. John Cohen was there. I watched John Cohen cheering. L listen, I, 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 it's no secret that I was a, a fan of the previous um, athletic director. I was. I thought, he, I thought he was a good guy. I think I might like John Cohen a little more. Like, I just – I love the passion in which he loves Auburn sports. He was he was in the booth yeah. uh, today at the uh, baseball game on, on air with with them, you know, calling the game, giving color commentary. He shows up for this team like he's on the road with the teams often. He already said he's going to be up there in Greenville watching the team play. He's going to be in Nashville watching the team play. He's going to try to catch all three teams. So so that you guys know, while the basketball team is in Nashville, so will um the gym, there's going to be a gymnastics meet in Nashville, and there will also be a baseball game against Vandy in Nashville. So yeah. you can go watch a lot of Auburn sports that week while you're there supporting the basketball Facts. team. But John Cohen, man, he just – I think he just gets it as an athletic director about what it takes to be supportive of your coaches and your programs down to the most forgotten programs on – like 
it's not just Former I'm going to support though, football. Right? Yeah. yeah, he was yeah. a he was a baseball coach. So he it's not I, I'm not just going to support basketball. I'm not just going to support football. I'm gonna be there for the women's basketball team on a random night where we're going to play Bama in Tuscaloosa and screaming at refs when they get calls wrong. Right. I wish I had gotten video of it. Like, I I don't exaggerate when I say John Cohen was screaming at the referee. For screwing up calls, my like kinda, my kind of yeah. AD. Yeah, yeah. Man, look, look I'm, I, I, I like I'm I'm a fan of John Cohen. I really he 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 has shown me something in this short amount of time about the the fierce nature in which he supports the coaches and athletes that are a part of his programs. I yeah, like I'm with you. I think he gets it. But the only thing I need him to get right now is that contract <laughs> and the pen. <laughs> Take it to John, John, Johnny Harris now and get her to sign it immediately. Be, <laughs> be, and, and, and hear me out, John, before the price goes up. Because here's what's going to happen. If oh, it yeah, has somebody's not started come already, the yeah. back channel contacts through agents is, is probably already started. And there's right. some other program out there with more support behind their women, women's program night right now thinking, if I can get a good X's and O's coach, put some recruiting resources behind her, and hear me out the NIL support that they're not getting right now. Yeah. Mm. Right? So this everything school shit, it, get behind women's basketball, right? Because you can't give all the NIL money. Guys, sign up for On the Victory and tell them do you want some of your dollars to go to women's basketball. And, and you know what's crazy is it, take, it will take a fraction of what they might give one football player for her to go and get two or three stars. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Just give her the support. She's earned it. And, 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 and uh, you know, LSU, Ike, record crowd. They broke an attendance record this year. Yeah, she she's she, broken all kinds of stuff down this she year, She did like, what Bruce crazy, Pearl bro. did, and she, <laughs> breaking went a lot door, of stuff. she went door to door asking for the support. Yeah. Right? And she, and she every game at the men's game saying, guys, we need you. Very humbly asking people to come out. And, and, and damn it, fans have showed up. They have. Now, are, are there are there record numbers every single week? Not yet. Not yet, but it's getting but, there. But, but let them make a run in this tournament, and then let them pick up some – because, honestly, Scott Grayson is gone after this season. Jemai, uh Mingo Young is gone. And, and those are two really big pieces that they'll have to replace potentially. Uh, we'll see what Taylor Collins decides to do. But you get Taylor to come back, and you go and you get two big transfers. Man, I'm telling you, this, this team – could make some noise. And the other girls come along. McKenna comes back. Sidney Shaw turns into Steph Curry. This thing could this thing could be wild, man, in 2025. They're yeah. great. Ben Bloodworth they, says she's worth at least five Tony Barbies. <laughs> I think that's she's worth yeah. more than five. Yeah. I'm about yeah, to say, man. I was like, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. agree with you. There. I, Listen, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get on. We, we've, we've far spent the time, but yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Coach Johnny Harris again. And that's not that's not because she coaches at Auburn, right? There are other coaches that I, I'm I'm a fan of that don't coach that don't don't patrol an Auburn sideline, but I think Coach Jay has the right idea of what she wants to do to build the program, and she's she, the the proof has been in the win column, and and it ha again you lost your th your three leading scores last yeah. year, and you won more games this year, like yeah, that's. Right. You're you're not more talented than the teams that you're beating. Like, right. let's just be honest. The teams that Auburn has beat this year, those other teams are more talented than Auburn. Didn't matter. They beat them anyway. Yeah, that's right. And, 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 and Ike, Marion on Twitter, screw you, buddy. You told me this team <laughs> was going to start one and nine in SEC play. They went eight and eight. They didn't even lose nine games in the SEC. So you suck. <laughs> <laughs> All Very right. passionate about this, guys. <laughs> Check out Mike's mixtape. They drive tomorrow. <laughs> calling out people. All right, I tell the people where uh, they need to be doing. Yeah, man, if you want to get more passionate takes from us, uh, you don't have to be a member to do that, but you can get some more analysis behind what leads to those takes by becoming part of the Green Name Gang. And we appreciate everybody who continues to support us in that way. If you are a member and you want to gift a membership, you can do that before you get out of here. Check us out on the Pod Network, Auburn Express, Uptempo Podcast, College Loop, and Just a Sec Pods. And, uh, you know, just because it is about to be that season, 
it's March and the madness is upon us. If you want to be able to put some money where your mouth is about all of the takes that you got about who's going to beat who, you could do that and go to BetUS. The link should be in the description for that 125% sign up bonus up to $2,500. Um, and they will get you right over there at BetUS. BetUS has been a good sponsor for us so far. And uh, yeah, we want to make sure. I Have I talked about the um, we're, that we're going to do a uh, bracket challenge this year? Yeah, yeah. You may mention know, it. Maybe. Okay. All right. Bracket challenge. I'm, I'm going to release the details of that starting next week. Um, so bracket challenge coming up very soon, guys. I just solidified how we were going to lock that in. So be on the lookout for your War Report bracket challenge. Uh, there's going to be a free version, but there's going to be a version where you could win some money. So yeah, we're details coming soon. Yeah. Before we get out of here, too, guys, um, want to encourage everybody to hit up the Rage Room. Uh, they're our Wednesday night sponsor. There's a graphic there. Yep. Want to make sure I talk about this. The Opa Like a Rage Room. Uh, they've got two locations, and they want us to stress this. If you live in Birmingham, there's some place for you to go get your stress out. 2616 7th Ave, South Birmingham, Alabama, 35233. Uh, they do great work there. Look, man, all, all of us know a Bama. Like, they don't have to kill trees. They can go to the rage room. <laughs> this is legal and affordable. Do they have trees there? <laughs> I, I'm sure they could acquire some tree stumps for somebody to swing at. I guess I don't know why you couldn't do that, like just outside. Uh, but yeah, this is this is uh, this is fun. I, I've spent some time at this business, actually, like a lot of time watching how they do business and, and how people come in and just all, all kinds. Like my boss got on my nerves at work. To I just want to hit something with some friends. It's it's fun. It's fun. You can get windshields. They actually have a car you can beat up. Like a whole car. Pretty crazy. So, open like a rage room. Check them out. We appreciate them for sponsoring this segment. Indeed, indeed. We appreciate you guys. If you share this video with all the Auburn fans and people looking for great content on YouTube, smash that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. We're on social media, guys. Twitter X, NIG, even Facebook at The War Report. You can also find us at TW Report on TikTok. That's it for now, guys. We will catch you Friday. Yeah. Morning drop style? Yeah. Yeah. We'll be dropping it on them on Friday. So we'll see you then. Till then, enjoy the rest of your week. And as always, wait.